Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'm going to be doing a catch-up of sorts. Um, I'm not going to be talking about all of the books that I've read um, since the last time I talked about books that I've read um, because it's just too much for me right now. But I did read a fair few books for Springathon, and that was super enjoyable. I loved it, and it basically threw me into a non-fiction-a-thon that is not actually ending anytime soon, it seems. Um, but I'm loving that. So my favorite book that I read for Springathon was The Seabird's Cry by Adam Nicholson. And it kind of just felt like listening to, because I listened to it on audiobook, it felt like listening to a nature documentary and I loved it. This is kind of what I imagined my ideal um, nature writing experience to be like. Um, I don't know if it will be maybe too in-depth for some people who aren't that fussed about, I don't know, just random seabirds and stuff, but I really loved it. I'm definitely going to pick up his other book, which Natalie told me what that is, and yeah, I'm gonna be looking for that one. Another book that I quite enjoyed in Springathon was Rewild Yourself by Simon Barnes, and that one I think I particularly enjoyed because it's very beginner level and it also is very um, UK specific in terms of things that you can do. Well, I mean, the, the things you can do, you don't have to be like in the UK to be able to do, uh, but some of the places that he mentions um, are obviously in the UK and so well, me and Dan decided to visit Bempton Cliffs which is one of the places that he mentioned to see seabirds and we did see a bunch of seabirds and it was really amazing. We saw guillemots, razorbills, um, herring gulls, uh, gannets and some puffins even and then the fields facing the cliffs um, had some tree sparrows and different things like that so that was a really really cool trip and I'm glad we went when we went we went in I think end of May beginning of June something like that and so there were just a bunch of birds there and it was it was really really good I have been reading a few things for invisible cities as well we did Lebanon last month I think and I read two books from Zainab Zainab Abirachad, I think her name is, Abirachad. They were both graphic novels and they stylistically were very striking and very similar uh, um, visually to Persepolis. The perspective is from her looking back on her childhood um, growing up during the Lebanese Civil War and that was interesting but it also felt not that in-depth I guess um, and there are a lot of things that it made me think about and um, obviously I think there's you're going to naturally want to parallel your life and your childhood and nostalgia and memories and things like that uh, with hers and how different that is that kind of thing um, but at the same time I didn't feel like it was that in depth or super emotional or anything like that so um, I found it okay it wasn't it didn't like hit me <laughs> or anything in any huge way, but I, I liked the experience of reading those two books. Two fiction books that I've read recently, because I've been picking up a lot of fiction and just putting it down because I'm just not in the headspace, I think, for the kinds of stories that I've been trying to pick up, but two books that I really, really enjoyed were Tower by Bae Myung Hoon, I think, translated by Sung Ryu, and I actually started this book in January. It's a collection of short stories, and I started in January and loved it, um, and then I was prioritizing other um, Invisible Cities reads uh, after that, and so I've only been kind of dipping in and out of it until this point, and then I think I finished it last month, maybe? I feel like anyone who enjoyed the curious case of Dasakin's trousers will enjoy this. It has similar-ish kind of humor and satire in it um, and the stories themselves are quite interesting. Um, I mean the premise in the first place it's a country that is a skyscraper, a massive like ridiculously massive skyscraper, an impossibly massive skyscraper is the country um, and there's all sorts of things. This isn't like some sort of utopian country either. They have all sorts of shenanigans going on and they're, we're following different people um, in this uh, country, skyscraper, and things that happen in certain stories um, we might hear mentioned in other stories and it's just really fun to see how um, I don't know, for me I like when uh, short story collections are interlinked in this kind of way and I really love this kind of humour, it's very me. 
Um, so I really, really enjoyed that, and I'd love to read more from this author. I think this was a debut, though, so might be a little while before this more stuff comes out from this author, but I'm absolutely going to be keeping an eye out for anything else from him. Then the other fiction book that I read recently was All Systems Read by Martha Wells? Yes. We actually listened to this on the drive up to Dan's parents in Carlisle, and I loved this book so much. It's so fun. Again, this is definitely my kind of humor, and I love anything with really fun character interactions, and this definitely had that. I'm really happy there are more books in this series, because I'm definitely going to be uh, picking up all of them whether I listen to them or not, um, this is just so my kind of thing. Alongside things like um, Cowboy Bebop, although that's more serious than this overall, kind of, and Firefly and uh, uh, just, I don't know, things like that. I, I loved it. And little known fact about me, I've already told uh, Doris, Stephanie and Jenny about this, but I am a natural maximalist who has um, minimalist yearnings and I love reading uh, minimalism books and organization books and things like that. I feel like reading about it makes me feel somewhat like I've already done the organizing slightly of things. Um, not true, but it also helps with a little bit of encouragement towards doing things and then sometimes I might actually do some organizing here and there, which is great. So anyway, um, I picked up An Edited Life by Anna Newton, and I follow Anna's YouTube, and I, I don't know, I find her very likable and stuff. I liked this book, and I thought it was a pretty solid minimalism book, which was, um, I guess, relieving in a way, because I feel like, you know, you like a person and you read something from them and you want it to be good, you're like hoping that it's good, but it might not be because it's not like writing is her vocation or anything like that. I mean, I know she's a blogger, so there is a lot of writing that happens. Um, there obviously but um, writing blog posts and writing books are very different skills um, so you know I was thinking oh you know hope it's good but I don't have too high hopes for it or anything but I feel like with minimalism anyway it's such a like there's nothing new <laughs> really that you can that anyone can say really but when I read minimalism books it's usually just to get um, little tips actually no that's that's all a lie I mean that is a nice byproduct. What it really is, is because I find it calming to read about organization and minimalism. But there's also the added bonus of occasionally um, I might pick up tips and things like that that are quite interesting or fun or just, I don't know, if I'm a bit nosy and want to know what other people do to organize their lives and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's that. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty solid book, and I would probably recommend it. I think it's very, it, it feels very millennial in all the ways that that means, <laughs> um, for better or for worse. And I didn't find things like a lot of the 90s references uh, particularly relatable, and I didn't, um, I mean, the Ryan Gosling references <laughs> like littered throughout the book didn't really didn't really do anything for me one way or the other, but um, I feel like that was still kind of a fun little insertion that she did in the book because it feels very her. Um, so I don't know, I appreciated that. I, it's a shame, I listened to the audiobook of it and it's a shame that she's not the one narrating it, um, but I mean, you know, whatever, it is what it is. I would also say that it would probably appeal to a lot of people who enjoyed Dolly Alderton's book, um, Everything. I know about love, or I don't remember what that was called, but I think I think the tone is similar to that kind of casual, um, that kind of casual girlfriends chatting, British girlfriends chatting kind of tone. Um, so you know, if if you liked uh, Dolly Alderton's book, which I wasn't really a fan of, um, you might like this, and I was a fan of this, so you know. Maybe if you didn't like that one, you will be a fan of this one too. I don't know. Anyway, so like I said, there are a lot of books that I'm missing out talking about, but I'll put some covers on the screen for all the stuff I read for Springathon, um, and I will maybe put some other covers here now for anything else that I forgot to talk about that I read. And I don't know, if you're particularly interested in hearing what I thought about a book that I didn't talk about now, then just let me know in the comments, and I'll maybe get to that. But yeah. I think that's a good way to end this now. Goodbye.
<laughs> See you in the next one.